viewers to another episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2024 GCE Mathematics paper team. So if you haven't seen the other episode, please check out on our YouTube channel or download the companion app that you are seeing on the screen. You find a lot of resources that is going to be helpful to ensure that you armor and ace that exam of yours. Let us look at question 11, which is the question on statistics. The frequency table shows the distribution of marks obtained by 50 learners in a mathematics test. So we have the marks on the first row, then frequency on the second row. Calculate the standard deviation, and that's 60 marks. So this is a standard question that comes always on statistics. So once you understand the process of doing this, then you discover that uh, this question is a giveaway mark, and I would encourage you to choose this question in the exam. So let me just move to the next page where I can zoom in so that I focus on question A for now. Then once we're done, then you can move to the second part, which is question B. So for us to find the standard deviation, we need to know two things. We need to know the, the mean. Then after we know the mean, then we can proceed to finding the standard deviation. So we use this formula, which is a mean is given by we sum the product of the frequency multiplied by the value x divided by, by the summation of uh, the frequencies. So in this case, we are lucky enough, we know that we are told there are 50 learners. So in total, there are 50 learners. So we don't need to uh, worry about that. Then after we find that, then we know that standard deviation is equal to summation of the frequencies multiplied by now x square, then divide by summation of the frequencies, which is 50 in this case, minus the mean square then you find the square root of this or thing. Once we do that, then we get the standard deviation, which will help us get this six good marks. So what is trick is finding the value of x. So this is where a lot of people would do mess it up. But once you understand this part, then everything becomes straightforward. So let us find the value of x. I'll put it on top so that you get my explanation. So the value of x in this case we have x is lying between 10 and 20 in that interval. So you need, need to look for the middle value. So I'm going to add 10 plus 20, which is 30, divided by 2, you're going to get 15. So the value of x in this case is 15. Then next, it will be 20 plus 30, which is 50, divided by 2, so it's going to be 25. Then next, it will be 30 plus 14, which is 70, divided by 2, 35. Then we're going to have 40 plus 50, which is 90, divided by 2, which is in this case 45 then you have 50 plus 60 which is 110 divided by 2 which is 55 then we're going to have 60 plus 70 which is uh, 130 divided by 2 which is 65 then lastly we have 70 plus 80 which is 150 divided by 2 is going to give us 75 so if you notice that the intervals are the same, the intervals are 10, 10, 10. So you could have just done 15 plus 10, 25, 25 plus 10, 35, 35 plus 10, 45, 45 plus 10, 55 plus 10, 65 plus 10, 75. So we found the values of x in this table. So once you do this, you are closer to getting the 6 marks. So next what we do is we start multiplying. So we multiply him, which is him, the frequency 3 multiplied by him. 15. In this case, we are trying to find the summation of f times x. So we are going to have 3 multiplied by 15, then plus next is 7 multiplied by 25, then plus you go on. So until the last one, which is 2 times 75, which is 150. So let me now explain using the table so that those that are comfortable with the table, they can get it. So as I explain on the table, you should be able to get this clearly. So you are going to do a table like this. You notice that the value of x we've already found with you together and the frequencies we've found them together. So now it will just be uh, 15 times 3, you are going to get 45. Then you move to 25 times 7, you are going to get 175. Then to be 35 multiplied by 12, we are going to get 420. Then 45 times 15, we are going to get 675. Then 8 times 55 or 55 times 8, we are going to get 440. Then 65 times 3, 195. Then 75 times 2, 150. Then we are going to add these values. So these values, when you add them, are the ones that are giving us what we are looking for, which is the summation of the frequency times the value of x, which is equal to 2 
1,100. So we know the summation of the frequencies, which when we add, we are going to get the 50. Then we can proceed to find the, the mean, which is equal to 2,100 divided by 50. We should be able to get 42. So 42 is the mean. So you use this approach. Then the next thing that we need to do is we square the value of x. So for example, we are going to say what's the value of x is 15. So 15 times 15 is what? You see, 225. Then we go on again. The next one is 25. We square it 25 times 25. We are going to get 625. We do the same until the end. Why are we doing this? Because we want to come and multiply this frequency, multiply by this the square value of x then we are going to end up with this so we are saying 225 multiplied by the frequency which is 3 we need to get we are going to get 675 then we do the same for 7 times 625 we do the same for 12 times 1225 until the last one which is 5625 multiplied by 2 we are going to get this then you sum these points you add these points we are going to get 98250 now this value is the summation of f of x square which is equal to 98250 is what you are looking for once we get this value then we can easily now go back and use this formula so found this we know this is 50 we found this is 42 then you can easily find the standard deviation so now let us go and replace so let us just create space so we're going to have standard deviation is equal to we are going to have the square root 98,250, which is this one 250 then divide by the sample size, which is the sum of frequencies, which is 50. Then minus the square of 42. We square the mean. Okay. Then the result of this is what you find the square root. So once you use your calculator, I encourage you to use your calculator. You're going to discover that this is going to be 14 point one seven four five, which is simplifies to. 14.2 to one decimal place so just be careful ensure that first you simplify 98,250 divide by 50 then once you get this result then you subtract 42 square 42 square from that then after you find that result and then you find the square root then you should be able to get this question correct once you do this you are good to go then let us move to question B so question B Answer this part of the question on a sheet of graph paper. Using the information in the table above, copy and complete the cumulative frequency table. Again, this question comes and it's always one mark because it's easier. So what do we do? We look at this table. So we have this table. This table is identical to the previous table that we have at the beginning where we have the frequencies. So how do we complete this table? So let me take you to the frequency table that we add. So what you notice is we are just adding the progressive frequencies. So if you go back, so it will be below 10. So how many are below 10? So we have zero because everything is starting above 10 because the first value of x lies between 10 and 20. So there's nothing below 10, hence we have a zero at the beginning, zero. Then next we go to greater than 10 but less than 20. So greater than 10 but less than 20 is a 3. Hence we are having that 3. Then next those that are below 30. Below 30. So you see we are 30. Anything that is below 30 to be 7 plus 3. So that's where the 10 is coming. So we are going to have this 10. The next we are saying those that are below 14, so it will be 12 plus the 10 that we found between these two, so it will be 22. Hence, we have a 22 here. So now we need to look for how many are below 50. So below 50, what do we do? We are going to come here between 40 and 50, we have 15. So it is going to be, we already have 22, which is 3 plus 7, 10 plus 12, 
22 so I'm going to have 22 plus 15 which is going to give me when you add these two it's going to give me 7 so 37 so we are going to have 37 here so we have 37 the next below 60 below or equal to 60 we are going to have 8 plus what you found 37 so it will be 37 plus 8 because we are doing 37 below 15 then be between 50 and 60 we have 8 more so we are going to add this 8 to 37 so which is going to give us 5 then 45 so we are going to have 45 on the next one then we we'll do the same for the 70 below 70 so you come here how I many are below 60 and this 70 is 3 so to this 45 we add 3 we are going to have 48 so the next one it will be 48 then lastly between 70 and 80 there are 2 so we need to add that to there we are going to get 48 plus 2 is a 50 so once we get this we are good to go then we we'll go to Loman numeral 2 of beam using a scale of 2 cm to represent 10 marks on the x axis for interval x is greater or equal to 0 but less or equal to 80 and 2 cm to represent 5 units on the y axis for y is greater or equal to 0 but less or equal to 50 draw a smooth cumulative frequency table so we are going to use these coordinates to plot this curve then loma numero 3 showing your, your method clearly use your graph to determine the 70th percentile so this one is much easier so let us just transfer this information to the graph so let me just prepare the graph so that you are able to follow me as I plot this uh, graph so I've already prepared the graph for you so that I don't waste much of your time so take note of the labeling make sure that the x-axis is labeled according to the instruction so if you come and check the instruction the x-axis represents max so each two centimeter is 10 max so if you come here and check you notice that this is two centimeter then this is also two centimeter so two centimeter along the x-axis is 10 max then two centimeter along the y-axis is five units according to the instruction that will be given so make sure to follow those instructions so that your graph is well scaled then next what do we do start plotting so the first one is how many are less than 10 is zero so it will be 10 comma zero so you come to the graph at 10 this will be zero then next it will be 20 comma three so again you need to know the scaling of your graph so 20 so if uh, 10 units represent 5 units 10 marks represents 5 units so meaning each mark is 0 0.5 so I need to move 6 steps upward so it will be somewhere just above 5 this is where 3 will be then next we go to uh, 30 comma 10 30 comma 10 so this one is easier so 10 is somewhere here we do like that then we have 40 comma 22 so we go along 40 then 22 so 21 22 should be somewhere here then we move to the next one which is 50 comma 37 so we go look at 50 so 50 so if 35 is here then 37 should be just four points above 35 like that then next we look for 60 comma 45 which is easier in this case because 45 is there clearly so it's here then we look for the last one which is 70 comma 48 or second from last one so 70 comma 48 so 48 is just as four points below 50 somewhere here then we look for now which is 80 comma 50 80 comma 50 so we come and do 80 comma 50 here so at this point you just join in these points so you join these points then once you do this you can proceed to answer the last question in this question which is question 11 so it says showing your method clearly use your graph to estimate the 70th percentile so 70th percentile means 70 percent of the total uh, pupils in the class 
The percentile is the same as the percentage, but in a specific different intervals. So we're going to have 17 out of 100 because it's a percentile times how many? In this sample, there are 50. So we multiply this, we're going to get 35. So we need to go to the graph under the cumulative frequency, which is the y axis, look for the mark 35, then go and lead the mark. So we come here and use a ruler. So once you place a ruler, then come and draw a line. So that line, once you join that line, then you come down and look for the leading. So what's the leading down here? So we come down, let me use a different color. See the points here. Coming down. So if you come down here, you notice that this point is 48. So that's around 48. So you come and lead down there. Once you lead down there, you discover that the value here is around is approximately 48. So 48 max. So this tells me that that's the 70th percentile is 48 max. Once you do that, you are good to go. Then you would have answered all the questions in this box. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in the next episode as we look at question 12. And remember to download the companion app.